Oops. I clicked the screen and moved on. Which is about what I wanted. Oh, I can meet with Sebastian. A hand kiss must have had some effect. Huh. Okay, what do I want to do? Well, I might... Hmm. Because of the various things I want to figure out, I might do a third run. But for the time being... Okay. My priorities for this run are definitely find out why Adin disappeared. But I also am very curious about meeting with Sebastian. So let's start with that. Before it says this is my only chance, then let's do it. Hey, Sebastian. This is Erica. Huh. He just hung up. You're still here? I'm still on the clock, you know. Huh. Well, I'm glad you take my security so seriously. Just doing my sir job, sir. I prefer ma'am, actually. I, I I have to say it. Don't call me, sir. Sorry, my bad. You haven't actually seen a human in flesh or blood before today, so it's kind of hard to tell. Well, I guess that's understandable. Especially with my voice. Don't worry about it. Alright. Anyway, did you need anything? It's just... It's pretty boring when I have to spend the day all on my own. I don't really know anyone here yet, so I don't know where I could go or what I could do for fun. Well, if it were earlier, I could have shown you around town and given you the tour. But it's getting dark outside, and I think most places are closed by now. Let me think. Do you like being outdoors? I mean, the ans answers are no, and be more optimistic than I really am about it. I mean, kinda. Which is more of a yeah than a no, so I guess I'll say yeah. Oh, me too. What do you think about camping? You want to go camping right now? Well, that might not be my best idea, but I'm not sure there's much else we could do at this time. Would it even be okay for us to just go outside? I'm supposed to be guarding you, you know. Technically, I'm still on the clock, but camping would be much more fun than you just staying aside and me guarding your door, don't you think? Besides, I'm supposed to accompany you wherever you go. Yeah, apparently that plan eventually changes. Oh, Beerfor says this unlocks a dialogue choice later to get him to stay away from the portal on the last night. Right, right, he gets killed on that night. Add that to another thing on my list of objectives. You're not a prisoner, so of course you're free to go wherever you want. I'm glad I'm not a prisoner given the circumstances. If you wanted to spend the night outside and experience the countryside, not only could I not stop you, but I'd be obligated to come with you. So, what do you say? You know... I'm not really a fan of camping... I've been camping more than once, in fact. Been a long time. 
I actually used to have my own camping tent. It was kid size. Uh, that was really fun. I think typically what bothers me about camping nowadays is... I guess the bugs... Yeah, mostly the bugs. That and... It kind of depends on whether I have easy access to a bathroom. That said, given the circumstances... A chance to hang out in a dragon world at night, get to see perhaps the ancient wildlife, while also getting to hang out with a raptor dragon. Incidentally, raptors are my favorite dinosaur. So, you know what? Sure. Sure, let me just grab a few things. Well, this is a new scene. Hmm. Well, if this is supposed to be coming up at night, I it actually makes me wonder about... Do I have a chance to do one of the other options after this is over? I was always under the impression that the other options were there as... Oh, like, I could visit two people during a day, but... Thinking on it, maybe no. Maybe that's not how it works. Maybe it's each day. One day, and then the second day, and then on the third day, we go back to the main plot. Well, here we are. I'm surprised we even got a spot this late after what you told me. With a member of the police force and someone who is as important as you are, it's not really surprising. They probably regard it as an honor to be hosting us. So this is it? No tent or anything? Oh, tent camping would have been a bit more complicated to set up at the last minute. Is there any other form of camping? What you're seeing here is cave camping. As long as we're close to the entrance. Essentially, they're run like hostels, but you sleep in caves like this one. Well, at least we got some furnishing. Could use a few sleeping bags, though. If you wanted a comfy bed, you should have stayed in your room. This here is the real deal. I assume sleeping in the wilderness is a lot easier whenever you're a dragon. Hmm. Uh, gotta think about this one. I mean, it doesn't really sound great. So I'm su supposed to just sleep on the ground? Oh, I get it. Your skin is sensitive and all that. Is that going to be a problem? Well, I'm not going to die from it. We even have some natural lighting in here. So much for the real deal. We could just sit in the dark if you'd prefer that. No, I think this will do. Have you ever gone camping before? How many times have I been camping? I can think of twice. I can only think of twice. Maybe three times? Um... I'm gonna say not like this, in the hopes that it is not a negative answer. Uh, 
I see. Okay. Let me check the other option. Let me check plenty of times. I see. Okay. Don't think this one matters. So I'll stick with my original answer. Not like this. You know, I was kind of nervous when I met you the first time. I could tell. It was quite a thing to hear that humans were going to visit our world, but when I met you and it turned out you were just like an ordinary person, that really threw me off. Didn't you meet Reza before? Actually, no. Everything about your visit is clouded in secrecy, so I didn't get to hear much about Reza from Maverick before I met you. I see. So, are you one of those who expected me to act a certain way because I'm human? Actually, I didn't, I didn't have much to do with it. Any high-profile guest would have made me nervous, especially if I was in charge of keeping them safe. I also happened to be the newest guy on the force, so I didn't exactly want this to turn into a career ender right there. With the whole murder situation going on, you should be careful that it doesn't end with more than just your career. Oh boy, that's a real one right there. Better hope these walls aren't going to cave in, though. That's not really on the forefront of my mind at this moment. Uh, in regards to saving Sebastian later on, B4 says... I'm pretty sure it sticks for later playthroughs. That is good to know, because if I wind up needing to do a third playthrough, I'm going to be concerned about that. Now I don't have to be concerned. I assume that this answer here is not going to have an effect on that. So, you've been doing a great job so far. Don't worry about it. Thank you. I'll do my best. I'm sure of it. How long have you been on the force? They didn't assign the rookie to me, did they? Just because I'm the newest guy doesn't mean I'm a rookie. It's been a few years now. I suppose that means you don't get many new recruits. Not here at the very least. This is just a small town, so we don't really need them all that often. I got lucky when I got this position, because I figured there'd be more competition from the locals. Kinda makes me wonder what big cities in this world are like. Well, given the circumstances of how dragons are encoded to keep the human way, they're probably like normal cities. Except with cars. Without cars, rather. It occurs to me, there's been no cars. Everybody's traveled around on foot. Neat. Don't have to worry about uh, pollution too much, then. Anyway, locals, don't you live here? I live here now, but I actually grew up in a small farming village that mostly consisted of runners like me. Runners? Oh, that's just what we call our species sometimes. We got pretty powerful legs. I can see that. Are there many villages where the inhabitants are mostly the same species? For sure. It's mostly smaller ones though, because the bigger they get, the more variety you'll find. I see. I only have my hometown to compare, but from what I've heard, there are other villages that are fairly similar. They can only survive like that if they lead much simpler lives, or if they focus on a certain industry that species is good at. So your species is as good as farming? Better than the earth dragons at least, even though they come in handy pulling the plows. Why did you decide to become a police officer? I just wanted to see what's out there beyond our visible fields, and if whatever was there was like the stories I'd heard. Is it? Oh yes, it's been great. 
Now that you mention it, I don't really know much about this town either. Well, what would you like to know? Lots of things. But what can you tell me about the people? They're a friendly bunch for the most part. Of course, I also meet some unpleasant fellows in my line of work, but luckily, those seem to be the minority. There was also a bit of a culture shock when I initially came here with all the different species living here together, but my police training took care of that. Uh, I still have the option of the first option, but now there's extra options. I don't know how many questions I'll be able to ask. Well, the fairy in me is wondering this last question. What's it like having so many different species on the forest? Compared to my hometown, it's been quite an interesting change. On one hand, you get all kinds of different people with all kinds of different strengths, abilities, and backgrounds that can make your work so much easier. On the other hand, it also creates all kinds of new problems that I never would have expected. I won't forget the first time I had to follow a shoplifter who also happened to be a flyer. Okay, what is it like to work with Br Bryce? He kind of took me under his wing when I came here, and I've been working with him ever since. But not intended. I found it a bit weird that the big shot himself had to show the country bumpkin the ropes, though. I thought he saw it as a challenge or that he wanted to scare me away, but honestly, he's been great. Everyone here trusts him a lot. Yeah, my impressions are that Bryce is a pretty nice guy. I was definitely concerned about him when I met him, but I like him. Okay, I got to choose all the options. What can you tell me about the land? The land? Well, I hear they have fertile soil. Not as fertile as my hometown, though. I was talking about more if they have any sort of industry. Maddie says Bryce comes off as just the small town sheriff. Everyone knows him, likes him. Seems to me like kind of a more serious Andy Griffith in that regard to me. If there were any comparison to be making anyway. Anyway, industries. Oh, I see. This town is actually quite unique because even though it's fairly small, it has its own production facility. With that, we basically have our own full production chain. So your one factory is everyone's pride and joy here? In a way, yes. It makes us fairly independent and keeps everything local. So each of the first options unlocks more options. Do you have any special recommendations or secrets I should know about this town? Secrets? This town doesn't really have any secrets. Not that I know of, at the very least. Maybe you just don't belong to the inner circle yet. I think as a member of the police force, I get to see everything there is to see. Hmm. What about the underground facility, though? Either way, I don't think there's anything that special about our town. Yeah, there kind of is. But hey, I'm not the only one who's been new here. What are your impressions? Good? Bad? Ugly? Oh boy. What do I want to say here? I feel like my answer is altered a bit from what it might have been the first time had I the option. Because looking at the future, hectic is definitely a way to put it. 
I don't know want to answer this. I mean, even considering... Just one murder... And also with Reza running around... That... That's Reza's fault, though. As far as the town itself... It's been fun so far. Okay, if we are in fact going to be looking at this Razor situation, then I'll go with the Razor situation. It's been a bit hectic so far. Oh, that is understandable with everything then that's, that's been going on. Maybe it's a good thing most places were closed. I'm not sure if I would have enjoyed any more sightseeing much. I suppose you're not just a runner like I am. We don't mind staying on our feet. Honestly, I would not mind having feet like yours. Out of curiosity, do you have those toe claws? Because those are awesome. It's one of the reasons why raptors are my favorite dinosaur. I'm not sure if it was a good idea by Bryce to take you to the crime scene, though. I know he's a hands-on guy, but that was... That really was a bit much. Pun not intended. Uh, where is the pun in this situation? Hands-on? Because he doesn't have hands? Not sure. If you need my help, I'm glad to give it. Fostering goodwill and all that. Yeah, that was definitely the idea of the first run. Well, at least you don't seem to be traumatized from the experience. Anyway, how about some fun? What kind of fun are you talking about? I brought some playing cards, a staple for any camping trip. No, oh, you don't have Game Boy? Or is Game Boy not a staple? No, of course Game Boy is a staple of a camping trip. I see. What are we playing? Just a little game called Bastion Breach. Ever heard of it? Can't say I have. We haven't played in the break room to pass the time. It's good fun, though things can get quite heated sometimes. Let me go over the rules. Sure. It would seem really strange that this world has the exact same playing cards as we do if we didn't already know that this world was created by a human from our world. Or at least this society. As you can see, each of us starts with all cards of... I wonder what the dragons think about there being human characters on these cards. As you can see, each of us starts with all cards of a given suit in their hands. You're diamonds and I'll be hearts. Okay. I would have preferred hearts myself, but sure. You've got my heart already? Really? Uh, you stole all those hearts, didn't you? I think that's another flirting line. Uh, of course. Wow. Those are certainly some claws. What you see in the center is the middle row, which is a line of shuffle cards from another suit. This way, each game is going to be unique since the middle row always changes between games. 
I assume what's going on here is this is the back of the cars, and I'm not allowed to see them because those are his hand. Now, this is how the game works. We will play a round for each card in the middle row, starting with the one you see at the very left. During each round, we both decide which card to play and put it there face down, like this. Once we have both played a card, we flip them over. The highest card wins the round, and whoever played it gets a point. To clarify, 2 is the lowest card and the king is the highest. The ace is a special card. It beats every face card, but will lose against any number card. I want to keep that in mind. If he's used up a lot of number cards, it will be safer to use the ace. Now, the card from the middle row also counts, so it's possible that neither of us will get the point for the round. So does that mean we want to make sure to place a card higher than the middle? If there is a tie, no clear winner between the three cards, or the middle row has the highest card, no player will get a point for that round. However, the next round will give the winner an extra point to make up for it. Uh, kind of like reverse bowling then. At the end, the player with the most number of points wins the game. Did you get all that? I assume this is basically a repeat or not option and has nothing to do with mood. But I'm pretty sure I got it. So this game is all about bluffing and mind games. We can always see what cards have been played so each of us knows exactly what the other player has left. Alright, are you ready? Sure. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you. Take all the time you need to make your selection. Here we go. Ah, a 5 for the first card makes for an interesting start. You could try to surpass it and play something higher, but if I'm going to do the same, you don't know how high I would go to not only beat the 5, but your higher card as well. Alternatively, you could count on me trying to beat a higher card and play a load one instead, just making me waste mine. What's it going to be, Erica? Well, we already know an ace loses against a numbered card. So, no matter what, I want to save it for the king, the jack, or the queen. I'll go for the jack for now. As you can see, I played a lowly two just to see what would happen. Getting to know your opponent and their tendencies is just as important as analyzing potential moves and strategies. I'm betting this minigame had a dedicated programmer and there's going to be some complex AI involved. Except for this first round, since he's explaining his reasons for it. So there might be some logic involved where he himself has some sort of rules that he plays by. This first point is yours, but now you'll have to ask yourself, was it worth it? The king presents us with an interesting conundrum, especially when getting him early when most cards are still available. I'll let you figure this one out, though. So does he know that I'm willing to play high cards already? Or is he going to bust on purpose? Well, I'm going to bust on purpose on this case. 
No, I should have used my ace then. Looks like a tie. Of course, the only card that beats a king is the ace. Playing it here would have been a rookie mistake. It's definitely a safer play to just get rid of a low card here. I don't know. Had I known you were going to play a three, I definitely would have been playing the ace. So that at the very least, I would have had a, t had a point. So now we got the six. Oh, right, right. Maddie's reminding me that Ace wouldn't beat bit three. Right, Ace only beats the uh, face cards. I was thinking about beating, beating the king, not really thinking about beating his card. Okay, six. So far you played a two and a three. Are you going to wind up playing a four? I'm going to be playing as... I'm going to be purposely busting on this just to see what you do. My point. Okay, so you're not just playing your cards in order. Well, it's a good thing that I did play the three, though, because I would have played a number th lower than ten as an alternate choice. Hmm. Well, if I want a point, I absolutely need to play something higher than a 10. I'll use the queen. Ah, of course it's a tie. But if it's a tie, that means the point goes on the next round. So I definitely need to make sure I get it on this next round. Don't worry, you can still win. Too bad it's not showing the score on screen. I really want that point. Dang. Maddie's sitting up. All right, I'll send you a read as soon as I'm done here. I'll probably quit as soon as I'm done with this hangout with Sebastian. Okay, Ace, Ace, does not beat a number. He's used up all of his lower cards. So I don't want to play a low card myself. Because the only other thing that 4 could beat is... Is if he plays an ace. So I want to keep in mind that he's got his ace. Hmm... Let me try seven. Ah, looks like it's pretty even so far. Okay, Jack, Jack, Jack. Is he gonna use his ace now? That's the tough part. He's either going to use it now or in the next turn. Okay, I'm going to play my ace in the hopes that we tie. I think I forgot the rules. Oh no, I didn't. Ah, oh, he played a number. So even though my ace 
beats the jack, his four beats me, but his four does not beat the jack. Darn. This is the halfway point, so now it's really going to get serious. Anyone can still win. Well, you know what? Two can play it that way. Interesting. It'll be funny if this game winds up ending in a tie. Okay, so let me think here. Hmm. He's played his 10. He's played a 9. He has not played an 8. So, I'm going to play my 8. Maybe that'll have result in a tie? Oh, right. He's still at his king. Yeehaw! Okay, well, now I know he doesn't have his king. He still has his 8. Which means if he wants to win, he has to play it. Um, I'm playing my nine. Darn. Now he's got a three, or we're looking at three. He's used ten, nine, eight. He has not used seven. So he might use seven. Seven, six, five. I'm going to play a five. Save my higher cards for the last two. Hopefully he plays a seven. Good, he did. I was counting on that. Yeah, this game is pretty much over. So I'm going to play my 10. He can't beat me now. Not with this play anyway. Uh, which means we tie on the 6. Alright, that's it. I'm sorry to say this, but you just lost. Ah, drat. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, I lost track, but thanks for clarifying. I guess I can't help it. I'm just that good. I'm betting there is an achievement for winning. Regardless of anything, I do not promise to get every achievement. He beat someone who played this for the first time ever. Congratulations. Don't be a poor sport about it now. Maybe you'll win next time. If there is ever is such a thing. Now I'll just put these away. No rematch? Maybe some other time. It's getting kind of late now. If you say so. Hey, maybe next time you could teach me a human card game. Um. Sure. Ever play Go Fish? Well, I do know some. I almost misread this as many. I almost, almost thought it said I don't know many card games. Glad I read that correctly before I chose it. We'll say sure. Maybe we should get some sleep now. I imagine it'll be just as busy tomorrow as it was today. 
And let's not forget, I'll have to get up early to report about all this. So, how do you like your bed of rocks? I want to be nice. But if the option to snuggle comes up, I want to have the option of snuggling. I'm going to pick this for the moment to see if I can snuggle. If not, I'm going back and being nice. It's pretty cold. I suppose it takes some getting used to. A blanket would have been nice at the very least. I could warm you up. Not sure if it would be safe to keep a fire burning overnight. You're right, but I wasn't talking about that. I see. Either way, the only blanket I can offer is myself. I'll take it! Alright then. Is that better? Sure. Well, I finally got to snuggle with one of these dragons. It's about dang time. I am satisfied with how that went. Eventually, I'm going to find out what this marker is for. Okay. Uh, I know what I want to do next, but I don't have time for it. Instead, I have time to end this stream. If you've enjoyed today's stream, feel free to give me a follow. I stream this every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, Maddie has not yet started, but you all know where to find Maddie. So let's go hang out on Maddie's channel and wait for him to start. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.